and for the promise that I'd given to you a while ago, they'll be able to have my vlog number three. Okay, the title of this vlog number three is all about uh, going farther than that. We need to define, we need to know what is a risk. Okay, so a risk is the probability of the hazards to cause harm, okay, and its severity of injury, human injury, losses, damage to property and damage to the environment, normal interruption to the operation, the loss of reputation, and the combination of all like that. So there must always have hazards and plus the exposure. Okay, exposure, meaning there are frequency of exposure or likelihood or probability of the hazards exposure. So that is risk, okay. When you talk about risk assessment, it is really uh, one of the incident and accident prevention program okay, in the OSH department. So that is really a proactive approach, okay to maintain a good safety performance and to attain a work safe work environment okay and an injury and incident free environment okay like that so that is the main goal of the risk assessment to is one of the programs for the prevention for the prevention of workplace injuries and occupational ill health diseases and sickness like that, okay? So that's the main goal of risk assessment with the controls, of course, control measures implemented, okay? Or any interventions, corrective actions, preventive actions implemented throughout your risk assessment findings, okay? Like that. So before going further, we need to know what are the three criteria sorry three criteria for risk assessment we have the prevention the protection and the precaution okay so in this risk assessment this is very very important okay actually uh, according to health and safety act welfare of 2005 and the section 19 all employers uh, shall identify and assess the risks okay identify the hazards and assist the risks and should have a written risk assessment okay like that so that is really a, a requirement of safety legislation as you remember we have a three uh, uh shall i say goal for the osh for uh, uh, safety objectives it's really uh economic legal and social like that okay so first or the first step for the risk assessment is is the microphone is okay now i have to use this one okay okay it's okay when i'm gonna charge while ago okay so the first step application of the potential hazards of course you need to identify the potential hazards existing in the workplaces okay and then after that we need to identify who are the persons are at risk who can be harmed and how they can be harmed through that particular or specific risk number two step two Passenger number two and then we have number three we need to evaluate the risk of course that's the time the risk matrix will be used because we need to rank the risks according to its level and intensity okay could it be high low mutual like that through the control measures established or being used or implemented Okay, so when you evaluate the rest, of course, normally, first, in the particular organization, or let's say whatever type of workplaces you are working, 
Okay. We need to identify first if there are existing controls and precautions already. If there are adequate precautions and controls already, then if there is a need to add more or additional precautions and controls okay, before establishing a new controls and precautions because we need to eliminate the redundant uh, control measures because it requires cost okay we need to investigate first so if the controls or precautions are already implemented in your workplaces then you can only add okay control measures for that and then of course you have to implement this control measures and precautions Okay, after evaluating the rest, you need now to record your assessment findings. Okay, you have now the assessment findings. And after that, you have to review your assessment findings and update it regularly. So that if there is a need to revise it, if you want, it depends on the situations and conditions throughout the years like that. For example, if there are new processes introduced, if there are new materials introduced, new technologies introduced, or the, the process has been changed and modified, then your risk assessment also will be modified and changed. So that's all to review and update our assessment findings. So based on what I remember, it should be a minimum of six months for the revision for the risk assessment. We need to update that regularly because there must be changes all the time for the conditions or situations in the workplaces, okay? Again, to recall, first, this is the risk assessment steps or risk assessment procedures, okay? First, we need to identify the potential hazards. Number two, who can be harmed? We need to identify and how can they be harmed? Okay, like that. Number three, we need to evaluate the rests. Through that evaluation, we can have the upgrade control measures and precautions. Okay, and then after that, implement those controls and measures. Number four, number five, we need to record the assessment findings. Number six, we need to review the assessment findings if it is really a need to review it based on the conditions and situations. Uh, regularly and periodically for a uh, minimum of six months or it depends on the situations if there are new processes being introduced change in the technology change in equipment change in the procedures or processes so that's the time also you need to modify your risk assessment okay so the risk mat matrix will be uh, inserted and injected in step number three in evaluating the rest we need to to use this matrix okay in the risk assessment to define the level of rest so that's why we have risk ranking from low medium to high like that so we need to uh, consider that considering the likelihood and the probability of the hazards okay to cause harm and then also the category of the uh, severity of the consequence because it was the effect the impact like that so our formula basic formula of risk is, is equal to the probability or the frequency of the hazards multiplied by the consequence and the impact so we need to put variable to really understand uh, quickly so we need to put l for the likelihood, of course, because that's F. And for S is for the severity. So capital R is equal to capital S. Oh no, sorry, capital L times capital S. Okay, capital R stands for rest, capital L stands for likelihood, and capital S stands for the uh, severity or the consequence of the impact. Actually, the those words are synonymous with each other. You can replace one over the other as you wish because it's, it's, it means the same thing. Okay, it, it's also the same with uh, likelihood. Likelihood can be also called as the probability, the frequency, how often it will ha be happening for the particular exposure. So that's the main thought. That's mean the same thing, okay, like that. Okay, that formula is very important in making risk assessments. I have no example here. 
Okay. Okay, how can I do that for the examples so that we can understand okay, for the rest math matrix? And now we can represent that by making table. So we have also the narrative or the statement, risk assessment written. We have also the table or the graphical representation. So the table is very easy to understand because we, it's already a document wherein there is a revision for that document, revision history like that. And there is a prepared by, checked by, like that, approved by, of course, approved by the CEO, like that. And the revision is really six months after that. Okay, you have no need to review. Okay, where's the pen? I don't have the pen, okay? Magsulat-sulat po siya for a while. Just wait for a while and I have to, to write it out on a piece of paper. <laughs> okay, like that. So, hazardous or critically uh, work activities, usually in uh, construction industries, or right? maybe it's also happening in the manufacturing and production of uh, industries, hard to work activities and confined space are the major hazards or critical activities. Okay, so let, let's start with hard to work and confined space. Confined space risk assessment and hard to work risk assessment, for example. But I don't have to, to go on detail because the time will not be enough because we need to step by step like that. Okay, because for me, risk assessment is more comprehensive compared to the job hazards analysis. Okay, the job hazards, but it, it's have the same purpose, incident and accident prevention tool to have a good safety performance to attain a safe work environment, incident and illness free environment so that we have a good records, we have a good safety statistics, okay, in our project or in our business organization like that. So as we can remember before, <laughs> you will remember before, up to those safety professionals who are listening right now, okay? So if you remember, we have a job assessment analysis, what we call as the job safety analysis. Okay, the job assessment analysis, uh, we have also steps for that. The first step is that we need to select the type of job to be analyzed, okay? For example, I need to discuss briefly because it has to do something in comparison to the risk assessment because it has the same goal, incident and accident prevention in OSH. So the risk assessment is more comprehensive that requires risk ranking, but in the child hazard analysis, we don't have to wrap it out as long as we have control measures, blah, 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 and then it would be enough, okay? But it has the same goal and objective, okay? Going back, step number one for job hazards analysis, we have the selected type of job to be analyzed. Number two, break down the job into sequence of steps. So meaning to say systematic stepwise, we have to break down step by step, okay? Number three, in each step after breakdown of that particular procedure, we need